Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cecilia and my intention is to inspire you with art, to help you to improve your painting skills and to unlock your creativity. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below to see weekly art videos. So I am super excited for today's video. I'm currently working on a new project and that is painting the surface of this piece of furniture that you can see here. In the middle there is a Celtic knot and there will also be the four elements as well as the four seasons and some animals on the right and left side. But for today we're only going to look at how to paint a Celtic knot. And it's been so much fun and really interesting to draw and paint all these different patterns and to deeply study them. Some of them are quite complex and I lost a thread several times. But yeah, I started with this pattern here and I'm really happy with how it turned out so far. Now I'm going to show you exactly step by step how you can paint that. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Before we start, I want to give a little tip. At the beginning, I didn't know what kind of color I wanted to use. That's why I started with a blank surface. But normally, I would have already primed the surface with the color I want to apply because in this way the whole painting process is easier and faster. So if you know your color, just prime your canvas first and in case you have a dark color, you can use a white pencil for drawing the pattern. I paint on wood and I already primed the surface with gesso and drew a square 25 by 25 centimeters. First of all, we lay out a structure in order to make sure that our Celtic pattern is symmetrical. For that you need a set square, a circle and a ruler. We start with two diagonals coming from the corners and the point where they cross is the middle point. Then we pick the circle and draw a little radius. I go with 3.5 cm because this is a ratio of 1 to 5 to the diagonals. You can choose a different size depending on the size of your painting, but if you want you can use the same ratio. After that we draw four tangents that are right angles to the diagonals and touch the circle in the points where the circle crosses the diagonals. Then we connect the end of the tangents that face the same diagonal right where they meet the edge of the painting. Like this. So now we got kind of a cross. Afterwards we half the square by drawing a line from the points where the tangents intersect to the nearest side. Then we use the circle again and draw a bigger circle, here 9 cm. But in case you have a different size, it is just half the size of the diagonals. Finally, I mark points between the big circle and this little line that connects the two tangents. It's a distance of 2 cm, but here again, if you choose a different size, it is just half the size of this connecting line. I really hope this explanation was clear and comprehensible. The final grid looks like this. And for me, this is really helpful in order to create a precise and symmetrical pattern. So after that work, we will start with the actual drawing. And in order to simplify this process, we are going to draw only a single line, not a double line with all the shades included. We want to focus first only on the shape itself. So this whole pattern basically consists of two different knots which I connected. 
we start with the first one at the right hand side, this point of intersection at the very top. We make kind of an oval shape with two tips, one at the top and one at the bottom. And then we go from the upper point downwards and to the side to this mark and make a spiral. Cross the same line towards the edge and then break it downwards and to the side, pass the mark, break that line again and draw a curved line towards the point where the circle crosses the diagonal. And then we go through this point, draw still a curved line all the way down to the tip at the bottom. And here I draw a little bit of a double line just to look how far I can go because we still have to consider the right distance between these lines. From there a little bit upwards and then right, cross the diagonal and draw kind of a triquetra and after that we go all the way up, draw a curved line through the point where the circle intersects the diagonal and create the same pattern that we did before, this one at the left side and we basically mirror that. And then we draw this simple ornament at the very top in the corner. Then we're coming to the second knot. This is a simpler one. We start in the upper middle, the point where the circle intersects the diagonal, draw a curved line and do the same at the left side in a way that they meet exactly on the line. Then we create a curve upwards from the lower point on both sides, go all the way down so that they cross on the line again and meet at the lowest point right on the smaller circle. So yeah, these are the two knots that we are using for the whole pattern. Now we just draw the same structure for each side. That's it! Now we create the tree of life right in the middle. We start by drawing a big and Asian tree trunk with lots of roots that are wild shaped. Some of them go down and a few up towards the branches. Like everything is closely intertwined. And then three big main branches which we split into smaller ones that are all interwoven as well. The next step is about the underpainting in acrylics. And here I would decide right from the beginning which color you want to use. Again, the painting process is simpler this way. I chose light brown because I thought brown would be nice, but afterwards gold came to my mind. And that's okay, I'm going with the process, but the only thing is, depending on the transparency of the paint, you need to do more layers, which needs more time. For the light brown I mixed ultramarine blue, orange and white. Now we paint a thicker line and we paint just a line and after that we take a look at which section is above and which one below and modify the shadows accordingly. I think it is easier this way because we're focusing on one step at a time. And yeah, we just follow the drawing that we did before. I would use a small round brush that is just the right size so that you can paint the line in a flowing way just the right width without needing to adjust a lot.
After that, we're going to define the shadow parts. And this is a little bit difficult to explain. I think it's best when you just watch and follow each step. But what I can say is that most of the time the line alternates from being first above another, then below, and then above, and so on. There are a few exceptions, but generally that's the pattern. You don't need to blend them because we're gonna do that with oils afterwards. I chose some sort of raw umber for which I mixed ultramarine blue, orange and black. In case you have a different color, just use a darker one than you have as mid-tone. So that looks pretty good so far. I also want to connect these two knots by painting a circle around the tree consisting of little loops. This next step you don't necessarily need to do. If you want to change a shape then you can paint over it with white or whatever background color you have and create a new one like I'm doing here. I realized whilst painting the shadow that these lines are too close to each other and I want to create more space between them for a nicer appearance. Now I'm painting the background and because I do it after painting the pattern, it takes more time because of all the little gaps. And that's why I said at the beginning it is helpful for you to know your color right away because then you can already paint the underpainting. I chose a dark brown similar to raw umber and in the bigger circle I chose a light brown but the moment I started with oils I changed my mind because for me it was way too much brown. For the next layer we use oils, finally. I love that part, obviously I love painting with oils the most and it's so satisfying because in my opinion the painting improves drastically compared to the acrylic layer. The colors are more saturated, vibrant and the paints are easy to blend. First I just want to change the color of the knots from brown to a gold-like color. For this shade, I mixed cadmium yellow, pale hue, raw sienna and zinc white. And while I'm painting, I'm looking if I need to correct any line. For the shadow color, I use cadmium yellow, pale hue, raw sienna, a little bit of raw umber and zinc white. And I already blend them, which basically happens naturally with oils since they have a longer drying time. Now we're coming to the background. I chose dark brown for that, you can go with whatever color you like the most. The basic tone is raw umber but at the very edge I add more black and then create a gradient towards the big circle. Around the pattern I use a brighter color because I want to have kind of a glue effect and in this way bring the pattern even more to the foreground. For this color I mixed raw sienna, raw umber and white. So I outline the pattern but only outside the big circle because in there I'll use a different color. And then I fill out the gaps in the big knot with raw umber and blend the rest with raw umber as well.
And obviously we do the same for the other half of the painting. Now we work on the inside. I use a different color than brown. You can also take just one color for the background and create a gradient towards the middle. Here I choose sky blue. And in the middle I use white mixed with a tad cadmium yellow pale hue which I blend down with the sky blue. In this way it looks like the sun shining behind the tree. The outer edges I paint a little bit darker and create a smooth transition as well. Now it looks like a bright sky. For the tree of life we use some sort of brown as well, different shades for the light and shadow parts and create a structured trunk. The left side we paint rather dark, the right side brighter with some bright spots. In this way the tree looks quite old and natural. And then also some wild branches and roots. The next step is about the details. Here I use very tiny round brushes in order to be as accurate as possible. Also make sure that the surface is dry to touch. I had to wait one or two days. Again I mix cadmium yellow pale hue raw sienna and zinc white for the main golden-like color. For the bright spots I simply add more white. We start by painting one big bright line in the middle and then we blend that with the main color. To the sides we use a little bit of darker color so we just mix the main color with more raw sienna and round off the edges. For the shadow parts I mixed raw sienna with raw umber and a little bit white and black. So here the main focus is blending. We want to create an even and harmonious color transition. We blend the shadow color with the darker color from the edges and then the main color and towards the middle of each section we use more white to make it bright. Sometimes I add a little bit more raw umber at the very edge in the shadow part to create a more drastic contrast between the lines. And yeah, that's what we do throughout the whole painting. This process takes a little bit more time because of the details, but in the end it's definitely worth it. The last step is about painting these really bright shiny spots. For that I mix zinc white with cadmium yellow pale hue. But I would also wait a moment until the painting is almost dry to touch. And then we paint just in the middle some bright spots. And at some special points with pure zinc white a really bright dot. Don't worry if the line doesn't look that well, you can blend it again with the mid-tone color. Finally, we refine the tree and paint some olive green leaves that make it look more alive. So that's it for today. I really hope this video was clear and helpful to you. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and also let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of this kind of art and also if you still have questions about it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time!